what happens when you cross a 3 Series with a Corvette. Well, hang around and find out. <laughs> Well, welcome to this little A46 racer project. Um, this is the uh, DIY brake cooling kit. Looked around and they're all bloody expensive. So I thought, well, I can put it together myself for the same thing. Um, the, the whole key to this thing is uh, these Corvette C6 um, ducts. They run inside the wheel well. You can see they're very thin. Um, so hopefully they'll give some sort of clearance from the from the tires. Um, and I won't have to put any steering preventers. The other bit of the kit is uh, these little adapters, aluminium adapters, 63 mil hoses. Um, and the all the fixings that come with it to put these onto the backing plates of the, um, in place of the backing plates of the uh, the existing um, brakes. Now those are probably the two most expensive bits. All of this you can see here, put together for a little over three hundred quid. Um, any of the kits that I've seen are either not available for the non M threes or they're just too damned expensive so they're all um, about 500 quid so all the details of all the bits and pieces that i've got here are on the website e46racer.com if you follow the links for the knowledge and then you'll see another link there for the diy brake cooling kit so what we're going to attempt to do is these bits Scoop the air in from the front of the car. There's a little ram air. All the parts, everything's listed um, on the website as well. So here we have, we've got the ram air intake onto this hose. Then what we'll do is I'll cut this in two, one for each side. And it'll fit nicely in there. Of course, it's got a beaded edge for the uh, the hose clamp, so that will go in there, just enough to get um, the hose onto it. And then, 63 mil um, ducting onto that, and uh, onto the the little backing plate to blow air directly onto the center of the disc to cool it. The whole reason for this is that the cooler you keep your brakes, um, the better performance you get out of them. But more importantly, the, they last longer. And if you're building an endurance racer, something that's going to be hard on the brakes in general, it's the only way to do it. So I'm pretty excited that I was able to do it all in. Um, we'll see what happens along the way um, and to actually fitting the thing. The key, of course, is these Corvette um, intakes, which none of the other guys will tell you. I've even listed the part numbers on the website as well to help you out. All right. Um, well, hopefully next time we'll see how it kind of goes together on the car. So here we go. Uh, fitting the little Burkhardt Engineering. Um, little cooling duct thing. There's where the hose attaches. There's one little screw there. You've got to remove the, the caliper and the disc for this one. Second screw there. And then the third one goes in with a little standoff in here. So impossible to do it with the disc on. All I'm interested in is the, the kind of last couple of inches of that, which will 
go into this end, we'll just pop rivet it in and then we'll get a chance to clamp the, uh, the hose onto it. Here we have just uh, 45 mils off the little aluminium uh, tube. That'll sit in there and then the um, flexible hose will attach onto that with the Jubilee clip. Here we have the little aluminium flange in place, just pop riveted. <laughs> looks, looks almost professional. Okay, fancy that. And this will just go in there, uh, it'll tighten up, we'll cut it, put it onto the adapter, just like this one on the car. So here we are, front left wheel arch. What's really interesting, these little Corvette um, ducks. I've got the MTEC 2 kit on this car. You can see at the front. And that's where the uh, fog lights would sit. So what it does is it sits beautifully in the fog lights and there happens to be a little uh, self-tapper there and there happens to be an attachment there <laughs> and, they, and they all go together perfectly. So here are the little ducts just, just resting inside there attached onto the inner wing thing there and then a little hose clamp onto that adapter that we just made and uh, I think well a meter of tubing is probably a bit of overkill so the reason I've turned the wheel this way is because we obviously want to cut the tube to the point of where it stretches so what I'll do is cut it roughly and maybe trim it back but we'll have to see because this is really flexible um, but we don't want too much in there because it could snag so I reckon we'll start somewhere about about there and see how we go so there we go 31 centimeters is absolutely perfect for the job so all I want to do now is feed the other stainless steel clamp onto there and fit it up so other conversions you've seen there's snakes of tubing everywhere this nice and neat specific for the non-M and uh, well tell you what I'm happy with that so test fitting the uh, the rims on it just to see there's enough clearance these are about the biggest uh, tires that you can get um, nine Kang AR1s um, 235 40 17 so running just 17s because um, I'm not running the big brakes or not uh, 15 mil spacers from IBAC and on full lock even with the steering limiters, we are just, just touching. Don't know if you can see that or not. But I just know that and limit the lock maybe a little bit. It's not gonna wear through, it's just literally touching. So I've adjusted this as far forward as we can go. And it's just, just touching with the two, three, fives. So what I'm going to do is just elongate that little attachment point further, bring it forward just that little bit because it's slightly thinner here than it is here when it starts to slope out. But it looks like we're on to a winner. So you can see now all I've done is elongated this side of the holes so I can push this an extra couple of mils further. So let's get the screw in and see what uh, clearance we have this time. So this is the inner arch and quite obviously there were ducts in there. So in the original um, ducting it was all there. Um, this is where it exited. 
Still good to get a bit of throughput, all the rest of it in there. But we're now going to have to cut out a little bit just to accommodate the new ducts. Um, that I know of, to cut anything, transfer it, is just, there you go. I've just used a bit of cardboard, traced around, that's the hole where the original cutout is, and then I'll transfer it to the inner wing. So there we go, there's the template. Here's their inner wing, and you'll see now the reason for putting the original cutout in there. We can line it all up. With the top and with the cutout. And then what we can do is trace around the back like that and use a little hacksaw to cut it out. So now that I've got it marked out, you can see the little line. That was the template, the outline there. So you can see roughly what you're aiming at. I think the trick is to take off just little bits at a time and see where we're at. So I might just trim it about half a centimetre, maybe a centimetre in, and then I can always just file it So back. here's the final install, uh, just some little 102 mil um, stone catchers to go in there. And I think you'll agree, it's probably one of the cleanest installs I've seen uh, on any of these E46 brake duct kits. So, uh, so all the info and links are on e46racer.com. Uh, head there to uh, find out uh, all the parts, all the links are there. Final cost was 308 quid, I think it was. So I think you'll agree, uh, well worth it. Uh, we'll see how it uh, turns out in practice. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.